Hi, I'm Lindsay O'Connell, and I'm here today to give you some tips on how to feel your best. As a licensed psychotherapist, I focus on helping professionals enhance their overall well being and mental health. And I hope these tools help you excel in life and in law practice. Today's topic is how to overcome thought distortions. The way we feel and function is impacted not only by what happens in our lives, but also by our perception of what happens, including our assumptions, beliefs, and thoughts. Our perception is shaped by a host of influences, such as how we were raised, social norms, and our own unique fears and desires. Sometimes, untrue and unhelpful messages filter into our subconscious minds and alter how we see the world and ourselves, particularly if we receive negative messages during vulnerable periods like childhood and our teenage years. Perception is important because it often dictates our actions, whether we know it or not. Over time, our perception can result in conditioned responses to certain situations. Our brains are always on the lookout for repetition, and when a similar situation arises, we tend to react to it with thoughts and behaviors that we have used before. For instance, if a child has the repeated experience of feeling abandoned, they may grow up to subconsciously avoid intimate relationships due to the underlying belief that people will eventually run off and leave them. These automatic thoughts and responses can become especially problematic if our perception is based on old information that is no longer relevant or useful. The specific ideas that are impacted by skewed perception or based on untrue core beliefs are known as thought distortions. Thought distortions are extremely common, and chances are we've all had at least one today. In order to help us understand them better, distorted thought patterns have been organized into groups. I'll go over some of the major groups of thought distortions, and as I'm describing them, try to notice if you can think of any examples of these from your own lives. The first is catastrophizing. This is when we get fixated on worst case scenarios and focus on everything that could possibly go wrong, no matter how unlikely it is to happen. When faced with the unknown, our minds become conditioned to start worrying about extremely negative outcomes that may have little to no chance of coming to pass. Anxiety and fear can leave us feeling out of control, and catastrophizing sneaks in to try to help us feel more stable and in control. The problem is that distorted thinking almost never leaves us feeling better. With catastrophizing, we instead get hung up on terrible projections of failure and disaster, which cause us to have some of the same emotional consequences as if these events actually came to pass. This thought distortion fuels anxiety as our minds stay anchored to worst case scenarios. What you can do instead is perform some reality testing. Ask yourself if this worry is likely to come true and if there is anything constructive you can do about it today. If there is something you can do, then great. If not, try instead to zoom in on the fact that you feel a little bit anxious and afraid of the unknown. Imagine how you would speak to a friend or a small child who is feeling worried. Talk to yourself in that same loving voice as you express acceptance that you're having some uncomfortable feelings. Concentrate on the knowledge that you will be okay no matter what. You've made it through every bad day you've ever had, and you can have confidence that you'll make it through each new challenge that comes your way. Self-blame is another common thought distortion in which we hold ourselves accountable for areas of life in which we have little or no control. This distortion often stems from a childhood coping mechanism in which small children stay safe emotionally by assuming a greater degree of influence in life than they actually have. Self-blame is essentially an effort to control the uncontrollable, but it often diminishes our self-esteem and leaves us feeling inadequate. The tendency towards self-blame can also harm our personal relationships by robbing us of the opportunity for healthy confrontation and boundaries. As with any distorted thought pattern, understanding and learning to spot self-blame is a great first step to taking control over your thinking. Bringing mindfulness to your daily life, you learn to catch these thought distortions as they happen. 
Once you can objectively see the distorted thoughts, they become easier to challenge and change. Perfectionism is a thought distortion I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Oftentimes, high-achieving individuals have a distorted idea that they need to be perfect in order to be safe. Being the best at each task and winning each competition becomes how we gauge our self-worth, which sets us up for failure by denying us the ability to be fallible and human. Outcome-based self-esteem is generally problematic, as we rarely have complete control over how situations turn out. Instead, focusing on our intrinsic worth and value is a template to build resilient and lasting self-esteem. Another pattern of distorted thinking is mind reading, in which we assign meaning to other people's actions and words without direct knowledge of their intent. For instance, we may decide that someone has taken an action intentionally to do us harm, when in reality, it had nothing to do with us at all. We might also get caught up trying to decipher what people are thinking by analyzing context clues, looking for meaning in every word and action. In these situations, what we really need is often a mental reminder that we are worthy no matter what another person thinks of us. Compare and despair is another thought distortion I'm sure you've experienced from time to time. Starting in law school, attorneys are exposed to highly competitive environments and adversarial relationships. There is virtually no other profession which involves someone else coming behind you and trying to undo and disprove your work. This can lead to inevitable comparison, and when we attempt to assess our own worth primarily by comparing ourselves to others, we typically do not end up feeling any better. Comparing naturally creates insecurity, which can be overcome by challenging the impulse to compare and instead focusing on gratitude for ourselves and our accomplishments. As I alluded to previously, becoming aware of your distorted thought patterns is the first step to reorienting them. Therapeutic techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT, can help you develop a more beneficial way of thinking. CBT has a three-step process called catch, challenge, and change, in which you notice a distorted thought, then challenge it with questions like, is this true and is this useful? And finally, you replace distorted thoughts with new and true ideas that both support you and ground you in reality. A professional counselor can lead you through CBT and provide you with more tools to intervene on distorted thinking. The bottom line is, you don't have to listen to every thought that comes to mind. Sometimes, learning to filter your thoughts is just the skill you need in order to feel your best. Thank you.